All right, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Joel, and I'm gonna give you a quick uh, run through of our new Mew uh, called OSC PAR. Um, it is a uh, OSC protocol uh, in a VST that is basically usable in any VST compatible host. It's 64 bit, and it's pretty neat, so let's dive in. Um, so, here I've added it as a uh, plugin on my track here, and here is the UI. So what we have, uh, we'll just start from like top to bottom, we'll say up here is MIDI activity. So what this is gonna do is send uh, MIDI notes to OSC tags, and we'll go over that in a bit. And then these are your macros, which are all renameable. Uh, so you, know, you could say that is test or num or whatever. Uh, the, and then the type of value is either going to be an integer or a float. Um, in this case, uh, for this example, we use an inter, integer and then we can set a range from 1 to 11. Um, so as I'm moving around here, uh, Unreal Engine over here is just picking up that int. So if I had a float, it's picking it up the same thing, it's just quantizing it to int. Um, so that's, that's one thing. Uh, so the first thing to kind of notice uh, to get up and running with it is what you want to do is you want to get your host IP in your port. Now I'm doing this all on my local machine, so I'm just using a uh, broadcast uh, and on uh, port 55666. And OSC address space is, uh, this is in reference to transmitting OSC data, whether locally or over UDP. Um, this tag is important. This is basically your root tag, and uh, the reason for this is in case in the event that you wanted to run multiple instances of OSC PAR. So you can run as many instances as you like, uh, and then give each uh, one a new instance name. So for this, we're going to call this forward slash tag, and that's the starting address for everything. So NUM here would the address would look like the can forward slash NUM on your um, client application that receives the OSC. So this is gonna be our address space of where the OSC is gonna live and then we can uh, go through that later. Transport enabled disabled is going to send um, VST transport info, whether you, your VPN, your bar, your beat, uh, and some other things. Uh, is playing, isn't playing, and we can dive into those tags. Uh, those are predefined, um, so we can show you how that works in a bit. So, uh, as you can see here, what I'm doing is I have an Unreal project file here, um, and what I can do is there's an OSC receiver in Unreal Engine that can receive OSC from anywhere. Uh, so, I'm using this VST, for example, just to kind of control the camera movement. Um, but we can dive into uh, Touch Designer as well and, uh, so we can actually see the values that we're changing them and, and how that gets affected. Okay, so here I have running uh, Touch Designer here with just uh, an OSC in input. I mean, this would apply to like any other application that supports OSC, so if it has some kind of OSC input protocol, you generally will have options like uh, the, the port to listen on uh, and the local address. Uh, local address could be broadcast or uh, like a discrete IP from machine to machine. Um, it's kind of on you. Uh, so here I'm broadcasting on my whole network here on the same port, the uh, OSC address space. And, and doing it this way, now we can see kind of what information is coming in and how we can use them. So um, as I move this value up and down, you can see it's sliding up and down like uh, OSC integers, right? So I'm getting pure integers from one to 11. So if I did one to uh, 100, and there you go, now I'm getting a more refined value, right? But um, if you really want nice uh, big floats, what you'll do is say zero to one, and you'll change it to a float. So now if I reset this and then play that, you can see that that, um, and value is uh, much more refined. So it's going from zero to one over a, a series of uh, floats. And <clears throat> okay, so uh, you, um, the way TD's OSC input works is it's just gonna add channels as it sees. So it sees uh, cam, the address is cam forward slash macro three. 
if I rename this to test, then it will send test. But the thing to note here is that um, address space can is defined here. So if I call this TD, I can say, this is just gonna go um, to touch design. So there you go. So now I have TD macro six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you have up to 10 macros that you can do ints or floats. Um, and here's another fun thing. This transport, um, you can enable that and then hit play on your dot. And now we can see uh, is playing. Here's the beat position from the dot. Here's the, um, the beat position is going to be kind of where we're at in the song. So as I uh, scrub around in the song, it's gonna tell me exactly where I'm at in the beat and which bar I'm on. Uh, so that will always do. And then we also do a 4-4 four, four beat clock. Um, and you could easily just kind of make your own things. Uh, like if you wanted triplets and stuff like that, you could um, have that as an integer and call it triplet and then automate that value. So we'll get into that automation now. Um, I'm just gonna switch my... So to get into parameter automation, what we'll do is uh, we see um, just in whatever DAW you like, you'll have your VST parameters here. So you can either uh, pass the transport, um, the macro, uh, all these are all automatable. So as I'm moving that, it's moving the value in OSC. So I could take uh, macro seven and show its automation and then draw a fun little color program. There's a big old sign there. So if I switch over, uh, or bring this over and monitor this data in our other application. So here is macro seven following this sine wave or whatever you want it to do. <clears throat> uh, and then it's just constantly spamming out transport information as well if you find that useful uh, for triggering things on bar or B over uh, or C. Um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, then uh, we'll do some node data. So what I'll do is I'll make a MIDI clip here. Uh, I'll just draw one of my greatest hits right here coming up. So now we have, uh, we got some note data. Um, and then what that's going to do is if I play that, it's going to send that note data out via OSC. And the way that's going to look is it's going to be note 34 uh, and its velocity. So these uh, are all pinned at uh, exactly 100 velocity, so they're going from 0 to 100 over ints. Um, if I bring the velocity down, then look at the data, you can see it's now 60. So it'll do all the notes and all that stuff. And if you need more notes, you can use notes as like custom triggers for your stuff or uh, whatever. And if you need more, um, uh, notes, you can always just add another instance and give it a new, uh, like we can, we can duplicate this <clears throat> and then go in here and instead of calling it TV, we can call it TV2. So now if we look at our channels, so we have TV doing that and then TV2 doing something else. So I could make a um, different no pattern there for TD2. So now we can see TD2 is just kind of going nuts on that. Those four notes there, and then TD1 is there. So that's a, just a good way to organize your OSC data if you're working with a lot of it. You use this in multiple instances and all that stuff. Uh, I, I think that's just about it. Um, and if you, you know, want to disable the transport on one, if you are using multiple, you don't want to send the transport on all of them. Um, they, you'll probably likely only want to use just one transport. Um, so if I go in here, and disable that transport, that transport stops going. So in here, nothing is changing, nothing is moving. If I can enable the transport, then you can see. Um, and the transport tags, uh, the addresses are always going to be the same. Uh, followed by your OSC address space. So uh, it will always be forward slash B, B, P, 
POS, which is the beat position, and bar, which tells you the current bar you're on, if it's playing or if it's not playing. Um, so if I hit stop there, it's zero, it's not playing. Uh, yeah, so um, we, I'll, I'll, um, I'll get into this XML. You can actually design your own cue sheets to say, um, if on bar uh, 75 you want to send a specific message or a string or something, you can do that with this um, load XML and send XML for debugging, uh, but we'll get into that on uh, probably a thread on the, on the support forum. Um, it's, it's something that I use actually for my show for um, setting track names and stuff like that. Uh, sending strings or bundles or arrays of data and, um, and stuff like that. So I, I think that pretty much covers it.